Hello everyone, and welcome to another video of the Cherryton Archives. First off, I want to thank everyone who watched the first video not too long ago. I was very much surprised with how many people ended up watching and enjoying it. I really want to emphasize how thankful I am for the support. Before we get into the video proper, there is just one quick mention I want to give to something I overlooked in the Beast Complex video. There is a piece of lost media, an animation made by Paru at her university in 2014 that starred Legoshi, as well as other Beast Stars and Beast Complex characters. I will not go further into it now, but there might be another video about it in the future if I can find enough info about it. Now, onto the video subject itself. Be warned, it will contain some light spoilers of subjects talked about later in the manga. However, these will not be plot relevant scenes or events in the story. It is all about lore and backstory, which are only briefly discussed later in the manga. I thought to mention it anyway, for those that really want nothing at all spoiled. With that out of the way, let us begin. It is known that dinosaurs in this world were very real. In fact, they are regarded as being ancestral gods of sorts, with the T-Rex in particular having a whole holiday named after it, that being Rexmas. While dinosaurs did exist, it is not known whether or not periods before the Mesozoic also took place. It is very possible that they did, and that scientists are aware of them. However, the beasts of these eras do not have the same religious presence as dinosaurs. Because the dinosaurs are seen as direct ancestors to modern beasts, as well as having been deeply entrenched in modern culture, we know that their extinction came in the form of a meteor. This is seen by the Meteor Festival, celebrated by the beasts in the modern day. What happened directly after is unknown. The first bit of history we get since the fall of the dinosaurs are the sapient cultures of the beasts. About live animals, which are ancestors to carnivores and called such because they fed on life, and nature animals, which are the ancestors to herbivores and were called such because they fed on nature. Life animals had a culture of violence and brutality, fighting each other constantly, mostly in duels where the losing party would end up as food for the victor. Some were huge and had long razor sharp fangs, looking like a sort of mix between a monstrous canine and feline, while others, possibly the juveniles or perhaps the ancestors of smaller carnivores, had a much smaller, thinner appearance, though still with a similar ferocious look. No reptilian or avian life animals were seen, though it is very likely that they too existed and followed a similar biology. The nature animals were the exact polar opposite. They were smaller, friendlier looking, wearing flora like bark and flowers to dress their bodies. They had no culture of violence, simply living off of nature, living in relative peace and as a result, their bodies were also much weaker, as they didn't have to be powerful in combat like the life animals. Details on their culture, however, are unknown. They also more distinctly resemble their modern day counterparts, with a larger variety of nature animals having been documented. The meeting between these two cultures went surprisingly well. The life animals didn't kill the nature animals, and the nature animals seemed open to interact with the life animals. In fact, the life animals felt like they had a new purpose, to protect and live with the nature animals. This ended up birthing a peaceful and prosperous civilization. However, this peace wouldn't last forever. History books show that conflicts have occurred between herbivores and carnivores. Unfortunately, there is barely any info on these conflicts, or the periods that they took place in. However, we are told about the greatest conflict of all. The World War, also known as the Carnivore Herbivore War. Said to have begun as an escalation from a dispute between the weasel family and the horse family, the entire world over time became involved in this war. A war between all carnivores and herbivores. While the exact details are unknown, it is known that this war was devastating. The herbivore population before the war was thrice that of the carnivores, and it was reduced to being equal to the carnivores likely involving millions, even billions of deaths. Herbivores were also devoured en masse, which was said by a herbivore soldier talking about how the bodies of their fallen were disappearing. The war ended rather strangely, with a whale ending the war, bringing an end to the global conflict and, in the end, the carnivores were declared the victors of the war. That brings us to today. Herbivores still have a severe distrust of carnivores and Carnivores still haven't lost their voracious and ravenous instincts. Dogs were bred as a result of the war, 
to make a new species of carnivores that had a focus on intelligence and obedience, rather than murderous potential, leading to them being a lot less aggressive, weaker and more complacent than their wolf ancestors. However, they are also much more intelligent and quick to learn. Nowadays, herbivores mainly rule society, despite carnivores having won the war. Details on this shift in power are not given, though it can be assumed that the carnivores willingly gave this power away as a result of severe guilt and regret about the atrocities and death that they caused in the war, never wanting to repeat them again. It is obvious that the history of the world is far from fully explored. There are numerous gaps in time, details missing and entire events that have gone unexplained. Even the nature of the dinosaurs is largely unexplained, despite their cultural significance. While there is a religious story of a certain T-Rex surviving the extinction event, there are no stories on the dinosaurs themselves and whether or not they were as sapient as modern beasts, or if they were completely feral. The existence of any eras before the Mesozoic era are, as mentioned before, never mentioned in either culture or history though their existence could be easily assumed, with them being a more recent discovery and thus not nearly as important to beast culture as the dinosaurs are. What is even harder to pinpoint, however, is what happened after the extinction of the dinosaurs. I have come up with some theories. With the existence of ghosts and an afterlife and thus the supernatural being confirmed, it could be possible that the stories about the one surviving T-Rex could be true. According to the legend, the T-Rex grew wings and turned into a bird, it could be that the extinction event was much more devastating on this world than it was on the human one, truly exterminating all terrestrial life. The new bird could be a sort of common ancestor, an omnivorous being that asexually reproduced and gave birth to sapient descendants, which then, in turn, reproduced as well, slowly spreading all over the world and adapting to the various environments. The omnivorous nature I staying, turning into a carnivorous diet, or an herbivorous one, depending on the available resources. This could explain how obligated carnivores in the modern time can still live on a vegetarian diet, perhaps having a more omnivorous digestive tract than their human world counterparts. The other thing it could explain is the existence of two fully developed and sapient cultures, consisting of potentially hundreds of varied species, explained by having them all be the descendants of a common sapient ancestor. This could also further explain why the T-Rex is so holy in beast culture, being a sort of mother or father of all modern life. Of course, this is only a theory. However, it could provide a basic explanation on how cultures develop, and what happened before the meeting of the animals and after the extinction of the dinosaurs. The supernatural is confirmed to exist, so it is possible. What happened after the meeting between the life animals and the nature animals is easier to speculate. It's likely that the herbivores and carnivores either came together worldwide and not just locally, whilst others developed a more monocarnivore or monoherbivore culture, with the mixed civilizations likely being the more successful ones, as they could utilize the strengths of both. The existence of different countries is basically confirmed, with specifically Japanese being a subject being taught at Cheriton, rather than the widely used landspeak when referring to the languages of terrestrial beings. Not only that, but the Statue of Liberty is also seen, implying the existence of the US. If recent history mirrors that of the human world, then the existence of France and perhaps Europe in general can be assumed as well. While this would only confirm the existence of three continents, it could mean that the scale of the world is the same as that of human Earth. Soldiers exist as well, with carnivorous soldiers consuming meat and blood as doping to increase their performance. The existence of soldiers, not to mention the ways to make soldiers perform better, implies that conflicts still do exist, even after the World War. As they are never seen deployed or even having any presence in the city, it means that they are likely deployed to other territories, which heavily implies the existence of other civilizations. Speaking of conflict and war, on numerous occasions, especially with the Shishigumi, but also in various other areas, guns are seen. They are not primitive either, being full-on magazine-fed semi-automatic pistols that closely resemble the pistols in the human world. This, combined with books mentioning conflicts pre-World War, means that wars between the periods of the meeting of life and nature animals and the World War likely have occurred, which would explain the evolution of weaponry up to the point where modern handguns exist. 
The destruction seen in the World War was likely caused by either aerial or artillery bombardment. Finally, the post-war period. It is unknown how power got transferred to the herbivores. This could be a very local thing. Carnivorous political parties are shown to exist on propaganda posters. It could very well be that the majority or perhaps equal number of countries and cultures are instead led by carnivores. It could be very possible that the nations of the world have also each reacted differently, some accepting carnivore rule after they won the war, while in other places the carnivores were guilt-ridden and deemed themselves not worthy to lead, thus transferring power over to the herbivores. Maybe a large alliance formed, where it has been decided that the herbivores should largely be in power. Another possibility is that the war didn't actually go the way we think it did, that the details of the war have been altered or exaggerated by herbivores in the city or country where Beastars takes place, in order to make carnivores look more violent and cruel when unfit to rule, therefore giving themselves the rightful place as leaders through information control. However, if we go down this route, then any and all information regarding history that we've been given would be very unreliable. In short, there are many gaps that you can fill through interpretation and speculation. However, these will all still be mere theories. In this video, I have been bringing a mix of history, religion and light scientific theories to try and explain the world. However, this world works largely on open symbolism, where you can interpret it in many different ways. In this world, history serves to explain certain aspects of the modern world, rather than the modern world being a result of historical events, like in the human one. Trying to make sense of it all by applying their values and events may be the wrong way to go about it. This does not mean that theorizing, speculating and imagining is invalid in and of itself. Far from it. It is this which expands the world of B-stars beyond the limits that we were initially given. It is through these means that we can make the world feel even more alive and immersive. I loved making this video and theorizing about the various events, trying to fill the gaps that currently exist in world history. If anyone who watches this has any theories, ideas or speculations themselves, I would greatly enjoy reading about them in the comments, as it would give me more perspectives and aid in creating a more detailed timeline for this world. One which in turn can be expanded upon by others. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and were interested in my theories, as well as the history of this world. It was a bit of a longer video, but a very fun one to make. Aside from your theories and speculations, I would also love to read any comments, feedback, criticisms and what you liked about the video in the comments down below. I am always looking to improve my videos and to make them more fun and engaging for all. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.